Welcome back, guys. Nate Johnson here with Fishing Michiana. Uh, I took a trip out here on St. Joe River, and uh, two things I want to address right away at the beginning of this video. One, I have a new microphone uh, from Rode. It's called Micro Video Mic from Rode. It's a great microphone, but it only works if you plug it in all the way, not halfway, which is what I did on this trip. So my bad. So I'll do some voiceover on this, try to make this somewhat entertaining. And two, before I get any comments, uh, my little man is sleeping on the front deck of the boat. He was tired. It was an early day. So, uh, yes, I do have six rods out, but there is two of us in the boat. So I am able to run three piece uh, running six rods. So I just want to address those two things right off the bat. Other than that, this is a great trip. I had an awesome time. Went out there, caught a lot of catfish. I uh, got a lot of them on video. Uh, I'm really getting this catfishing bug this year. Summertime usually is a walleye time or white bass fishing for me, uh, but I really got this bug for catfishing, so I'm going to keep running with this. I might do some uh, bluegill on the beds video here pretty soon. I'd like to hear from you guys. Shoot some comments below. As always, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I'm uh, almost at 600 subscribers. My goal is obviously to get to 1,000 by the end of the year. So uh, if you're watching this video, man, hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me. Uh, and two, let me know what you guys want to see. I get a lot of people messaging me, commenting on uh, lakes they want to see me fish. Right now I'm enjoying some catfishing, chance to take my family out and have them hook up into some big fish. But if you guys want to see something different, you know, let me know. Uh, I really would like to go do a uh, secret spot for me that I've got for some bedded bluegills. Around 4th of July, I have a honey hole that I'm going to share with you guys where we catch monster bluegills. It's a place you would never expect, so I'm excited to put that out. And then also, I'm going to be doing a nighttime Oliver Lake trout fishing. That's also a great video if you've got kids or family that want to go out and catch some fish. It's easy fishing, uh, and I'll show you all the hows to and how to do it, uh, and you're going to have a blast doing that as well. And if you like trout, man, that's a, it's a great place to catch trout and limit out pretty quick. Uh, I also heard Birch Lake is a good lake for that, uh, so that might be in my to-do this summer yet as well. So, Again, I'm a weekend angler. I can only get out uh, on Saturdays and Sundays and sometimes Friday night. So these videos, man, uh, they're a lot of work, but uh, I want to put them in. I want you guys to get out there and catch some fish. I uh, just had a guy, Eric Frankenberger, who messaged me that was able to get out on this river with his family and catch some pretty big channel catfish, so pretty excited about that. Anyways, uh, without further ado, here comes the video. I hope you guys enjoy it. And again, I'll uh, try to keep it as exciting as I can. Yeah, you hooked up. See, last weekend when I was fishing out here, I didn't let him take it. And um, yeah, that's a nicer fish. Channel cat, it feels like. It's rolling. But yeah, I, I, he's going to get my other line take it last weekend no well, maybe you won't it's kind of going over top of it and uh uh man i missed so many fish i just didn't let them take it so this weekend i changed out my circle hooks to a different hook right and the, this isn't a real big fish and uh and then i uh downsized my bluegills so this one that just ate here is on i believe this style called a flapper which is, uh, or a headpiece, I can't tell yet. I don't know in a second here. Yeah, this ain't a very big fish. Little channel. Is that a channel or a flathead? Let's see here. Yeah, it might be a little flathead. Hang on. Hang on, I almost got him there. All right, I got him. Oh, it's a dark channel. Super dark, not that big. Uh, but, uh, I don't know, weigh a three pounder. Look good, but uh, yeah, I switched it out and I went to what's called a flapper, which is where you take the body section and you just um, fillet the sides, right? And uh, and then uh, so the you got you know three surface areas putting scent out, and then those sides flap in the in the breeze or in the current. Right. So. All right, let me show you what I'm doing here. So that that one I just caught was on what I call a flapper. And all I'm doing is just filleting this bluegill down and allowing some of that body piece to kind of flap in there in the current. So I can I show you how I'm doing this? Just fillet this little. I mean, it's not big bluegills. And uh, just filleting it down just like that. And then I 
I saw this in Dieter Melhorn. He's a big Tennessee cat fisherman. But uh, this is how he does it. So, and then uh, they cut this back section off. I hate, I hate the tails. I don't know why. I just hate them. And let me hook this up just like this. I threw the both at the lays. That's it. Just a little flapper piece of fish. All right, guys, here's where the video gets fun. So we have a ton of footage now of good fishing. There's one that just hit second rod in. And of course, without fail, every time a fish hits, I'm in the middle of doing something, whether it's uh, tying a hook on or rigging a rod or baiting a rod or on the phone. It's just inevitable. And I think we can all agree upon that when you're fishing. It's like deer hunting. Uh, the minute that you uh, do something you shouldn't be doing is when the deer come by. So fishing is not much different. This fish right here, um, it's not a big fish, uh, but I was having a rough morning getting on a fish. I just had the little one from earlier. Uh, so it was exciting to get a bite here. Um, you can see I get the fish netted in here now. So that fish will probably go about 10 pounds, maybe eight pounds. Not a monster fish, but a good fight. And what I did figure out on this trip is the weekend before the water temperature is 61 degrees and it's 71 degrees now so it's a 10 degree jump it's a nice little channel catfish there and uh, that 10 degree jump made a huge difference in how hard the fish were fighting uh, this particular hook strike right here i put in slow motion because i only got a snippet of it uh, but this is a little bit bigger fish uh, as you can see by the bend in the rod um, and the fish, like I was saying, are just fighting so much harder as water temperature went from 60s to 70s. Uh, I just couldn't believe the difference in the fight. Now keep in mind that I am coming off of a flood. You know, we've had some river floods this time of year, so the water is dropping. So I'm fighting a couple things here. I got a water drop, so I'm trying to find the new holes as well as water temperature rise. And as I'm learning this catfishing thing, I'm also figuring out, you know, these little details on what I need to do next time I go out so right now the water level is at regular level as we talk today uh, it is definitely a different game out there they're not anywhere near the holes they were in on this fishing trip here uh, they've moved around quite a bit but that's the fun of it that's the fun of fishing is figuring out the puzzle and the pieces this particular fish right here was the at the time the biggest of the day this fish I believe when we get in here went 12 or 13 pounds maybe better we'll get a better look at it here i can't remember once we get it in but you can just see the pull on this fish uh, i wish my sound was going because you could hear the drag ripping uh i could not control this fish i mean the fish was really going wherever it wanted to go and it was great i gotta tell you if you don't like this type of fishing uh you shouldn't fish because this is great i absolutely love how hard these fish fight and the excitement when that rod goes down uh, pretty good hookup ratio you get the right hooks obviously i recommend circle hooks that's a nice catfish right there uh dark dark channel catfish and um like i was saying run circle hooks that's the key to catch these fish out here uh this fish right here i believe went 13 or 14 pounds look at the knobs on his head you see the big bumps on his forehead there uh, that is an indicator for catfish of their age. The bigger the bumps, the older they are. So at, once again, I'm uh, untangling everything from the net. And of course, I have another eye going off. Like I said, it never fails as soon as you're doing something. If you want to catch a fish when you're fishing, do something that has nothing to do with fishing. It's guaranteed you're going to get a bite. Uh, this fish hooks up good. And I believe this fish is even bigger than a fish I just caught. And that's how this goes. Uh, the, when the bite's on, they're moving up river. You just got to be in the right spot when they move. And uh, you need to double up. You know, these fish is just pulling. I'm laughing right now because it's just ridiculous how hard these fish are pulling. That's another nice channel catfish there. And, of course, the net, like always, hooks on everything in a boat it could possibly hook on. Am I right, guys? If you have anything sticking up, it's inevitable that net is going to stack on it somehow, especially when you really need it. So, uh, always be good to have somebody to net this for me, but they're going to get snagging up again on top of the motor. <laughs> uh, but I'm starting to get this down where I net it myself. 
this Beckman net I picked up from Clear H2O up in Edwardsburg. Uh, this has been a stud net. I got this for salmon fishing. If you watch my video from King Salmon Fishing last year, uh, I had a little net and it just wasn't doing a trick, so I upgraded to that one. This fish, about the same size, a little bit bigger. You see, it's a little thicker fish on the last fish. Uh, but look at the belly on this thing, guys. I mean, these fish are just gording themselves. And I believe that fish went 15 pounds. It's a nice channel. Now, I'm going to be cutting out here pretty soon because we're going to have volume back. Uh, but this is my redemption fish. This particular fish on my last video, uh, I believe I hooked this same fish in this little creek back here. And it was my chance to get back in after. So, watch this fight. It was a great fight. That's a big fish. That's a really big fish. That's a really big fish. Keep on my other lines here. Give us another show here. What do we got here? Man. Look at that. Oh, it's a big old channel. Huge channel. Wow, that's a big fish. You get them in here and be able to roll us off this hook. Got these gamagatsu. They usually stick pretty good. It's a big old channel, boys. Man, that's a big old fish. Shot here. Oh, easy, easy, easy. Oh man, he's so close. He ain't ready yet. He ain't ready yet. Okay, oh, yeah, he's ready. He's ready. Got him. Yes. Oh yeah, baby. That is a pig! Holy cow, that's a big fish. Oh, he's still full of fight. Check that out, boys. <laughs> that's a good fish right there. That's a good fish. We're gonna stick him on the board and see what he measures. This net out of the way. Oh, get my hand good. This is this fish measures. This fish boards at uh, you know, out there. There he is. 30 and a half. 30 and a half inch fish. Alright, let's get a weight on him. We'll get him back in the water. Fish weighs 13.86 pounds. 13.86. Look at the belly on these fish. Man, these fish are fat. <laughs> That's it right there. Biggest one of the day so far. Thank you, sir. Let's get a good release here. Make sure this fish is okay. Seems to be okay. Stop biting me. Here it goes. Good to go. All right. 
All right, guys, that wraps up this video. I hope you appreciate how hard I had to edit this up, not having any sound. Uh, but thanks again for all your support. This is Nate again with Fishing Michiana. If you made it to the end of this video, please leave me some comments. Uh, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I really appreciate the support. And uh, see you guys on the next video. Thanks again.